Welcome back to our series about your last will and testament. Last time we walked you through what your will can do for you and why you need one. Today, let's go over one of the more important decisions you made in your will, who you want to be in charge of your estate. This person is most commonly known as the executor. In some states, we call this person your personal representative. The executor is someone you have chosen who is trustworthy and is aware of their role. They will be officially appointed by the probate court and they are expected to sort through your estate, settle any outstanding debts, handle the asset distributions, and pay the funeral expenses. The executor is a fiduciary, which means they have a legal duty to act in the best interest of the beneficiaries of the estate. Even if they are not very comfortable with their responsibilities, they can work with an expert, such as an, an attorney or an accountant, when they make decisions and carry out the wishes you stated in your will. The executor is accountable to the court, and the court relies on the executor to make sure the tasks are done properly and timely. If there is no executor chosen, someone can petition the court to be appointed, and it may or may not be someone you'd like or trust. The court may also appoint someone who doesn't ask for the job. This may increase the expenses of the estate. To be your executor, this person needs to be available, capable, and conscientious. When we say available, we mean that the executor is able, willing, and located relatively close to you. The ability to serve in it as an executor means your choice must have the legal and personal capacity to serve. It's usually best to pick someone younger than you and not overloaded with personal or professional responsibilities. Find someone who is willing to serve in the role. Someone who cringes at the topic of death may not be a good fit for this role. Your executor has to deal with a myriad of financial and legal issues fairly quickly after your death, and an inability to deal with this reality will not be helpful for your beneficiaries. Finally, pick someone who is basically local to you. The ideal choice is someone who is close by and is in frequent contact with you. Your child living across the country may find it logistically difficult to deal with the court, creditors, and the assets, such as the sale of your home. Finally, while it may seem obvious, your executor should be conscientious about following your wishes, regardless of whether they agree with your decisions. In your will, you can choose to leave your estate to anyone you wish. You don't need a reason to leave someone out. Your will, the way it is written as of the date of your death, memorializes your wishes. Your executor is legally bound to follow those wishes, no matter their concerns. Your executor must also follow any unpopular decisions you memorialize in your will. If you decide to disinherit family members or leave friends or family nominal amounts, often contrary to what these friends or family members were expecting, the executor has to follow your wishes. It may even lead to harassing phone calls or even threats of litigation. Your executor must stand firm in following the terms of your will. In short, your executor needs to have a strong backbone. A couple of other things to consider before you finish your choice. There's no requirement to choose one of your children or any family member. Sometimes that can create bad feelings, even among adult children. Naming more than one executor should be carefully considered, since they both will have to agree before decisions can be acted upon, and they will have to sign everything together. This can be a logistical problem that causes delays or leads to stalemates if they disagree but you can name one as the executor and the second as an alternate. These are all things to consider when choosing your executor. It's an important decision for the future of your beneficiaries. In our next video in this series, we will talk about your beneficiaries and how you can provide for them in your will.